Hello, welcome to the weekly portion with the one year with the Ramchal. And uh, now um, we're going to speak about the parasha of the called Shmini. So according to a deeper understanding of the Kabbalah, the perfection of the universe and the human soul manifests through the system that is called the Ten Sefirot. So these Sefirot are considered divine attributes or energies that are determined and influencing all that existing. If we are going to divide these forces represented by the Ten Sefirot into two parts, then we can make the upper three into Keter Chochma Bina, and uh, uh, the lower sef, uh, seven um, uh, uh, sefirot. Okay, the upper three is called this triad, and these are the highest uh, sefirot that uh, we can see. Basically, human cannot enter to this realm. So the the keter is the uh, top. Uh, the highest sphere is the absolutism of. Uh, of the creation that is uh, symbolizing also perfection and uh, and completeness then we have the chokhmah the wisdom um, it is uh, it is the source of creativity and uh, intuitive understanding and the hidden knowledge as well the bina this is the understanding um, you know uh, where we can see the analysis and and the deep comprehension uh, and Bina also helps understand the process of ideas and possibilities uh, that was uh, uh, outlined by the Hochma. The, so these uh, three Sefirot is represented the highest uh, uh, among the ten, uh, and it's flowing the divine energy in it, uh, serving uh, the creation and the sustenance of the universe. So uh, we cannot, as I told you, we cannot enter to this upper three Sefirot, okay. Uh, below that, we have Chesed, Gvura, Tiferet, Netzach, Od, Yesod, Malchut. Okay, so Chesed is the kindness, uh, uh, Gvura is the, the strength, um, and also judgment. Tiferet is the beauty, harmony, and balance. Netzach is victory, eternity. Uh, hod of glory, humility, and respect. Yes, Sod is the foundation uh, mm, that all these sefirot is entering into that, and Malchut is uh, representing our physical world. Okay, and here we have Vehi beYom Hashmini Kara Moshe Laaron Ubanav Lezikne Israel. And it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. So on the eighth day, it is proceedings Aaron in adjuration, Moses performing the duties of the priest, aligning with the system of the lower seven sefirot. So each sefirah is corresponding to a day, like Chesed, Gurati, Feret, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, Machut. Uh, that is representing. It is important to understand the significance of each word representing in the Torah in the text. So during so uh, Aaron's inauguration, emphasis is placed on Moses calling the elders as well. Okay, so if you if you remember, I I just read to you Mini on the eighth day, Kara Moshe Moses called Laaron Banav Lezikne Israel. So we mentioned why seven, and now we have that the Moses is calling for the elders. According to Hazal, the elders were valuable not for their wisdom and experience, but also because they age, signifying a kind of clarity and vision, indicating a certain spiritual level. Therefore, it is important to involve them in every question and decision that we are going to make. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the living things which made me eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. So uh, we have here Chaya mentioned and Behemah, signifying this is animals. So what are the, what are the difference between among them? So it sounds really the same. So men created in a divine image that is called Tzelem Elohim, 
It is the top of the creation. So animals are subordinate secondary to humans, essentially serving human purposes, as do the animals and other creatures beneath humans in the creation. So that is meaning that human can consume everything that has been under, underneath, subjugated under them in the creation, both like we eat animals and plants alike. An animal that consumes a plant is considered lower in the hierarchy of creation, belonging to its lower orders. The animal world is divided into two categories. We have the kosher and the non-kosher animals, which can be distinguished based on the physical characteristic and the species. So the kosher animals be, uh, are belonging to the uh, kedusha, and why the non-kosher are belonging to the tuma. So these two worlds are existing parallelly to each other. So both the behema and the chaya are animals, but chaya is the type of animal that is kosher, that is consumed by, by, by uh, 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 Israelites, and, uh, uh, and behema are the non-kosher. Kol mefarset parsa v'sheset shesa poreset me'alea gera bebehema ota tuhu. Whatsoever parted the hoof and, uh, and uh, is wholly cloven footed and cleft the cud among the beasts, they may yet eat. So the kosher characteristic include that in ruminants capable of rejurgating and rechewing their food, such as the cows, the sheep, goats, and the deer, this digestive process aids in maximizing the absorption of the fibrous plant material that would otherwise be difficult to digest it. So thus the animal uh, extracts nutrition from the consumed plants efficiently. So accordingly, uh, the nature of the animal's hooves is also crucial. So kosher animals must have split hooves. The hoof is divided, facilitating better trimming or of the animal's nails. So we did discuss the characteristics of kosher animal, and after we mentioned uh, it is made of four animals, each having one of them defining traits of a kosher animal. So according to the sages, there are four animals corresponding to four exiles that the people of Israel must undergo. This is mentioned in, the, uh, in this portion. We have Gamal, the camel, representing the Babylonian exile, uh, Shafan, uh, the Hare, representing the uh, Median Persian exile, the Arnevet, Rabit, representing the Greek exile, and we have the Hazir, the pig, representing the Edom, that is the last one, the ultimate, the Roman exile. So according to ancient Jewish tradition, the consumption of certain animal species is forbidden as they are associated with the Tuma impurity, and that these are the non-kosher animals. So this tradition has remained unchanged to this day, and these animals are still not consumed according to the halacha, the Jewish law. It is important to highlight that during the period of the desire, this is a particular caution must be exercised regarding intermarriages with non-Jews. So this preserves the pure energies of the Israel um, uh, community and supports the connection to the divine. So this connection must always be strengthened. Adhering to kosher rules helps individuals maintain a close relationship with the divine, keeping kosher aids and keeping our souls pure. Um, אל תשקצו את הנפשותיכם בכל שרץ שורץ ולא תתאמו בהם ונטמע בם. You shall not make yourself detestable with any swarming that they are swarmed, neither shall you make yourself unclean with them that you should be the filter thereby. An animal that crows without legs also won't be kosher. And consuming non-kosher animals is the worst possible option which can have an impact on us. So well, the spiritual light of the divine will not reach our souls, those who consume this non-kosher animal. Instead of soaring high the realms of spirit, we will experience the lowest depth of earthly existence. So uh, humanity often feels lost in the world created for its struggles to discern uh, between good and evil. 
Events are often uh, interpreted negatively, so may uh, serve our development, representing steps we couldn't have taken alone. Often, humans seek to avoid suffering and pain, unwittingly in hindering progress. Since we couldn't have reached this level of development alone, this negative force would help us to achieve it. Good, good things often obscure our ability to perceive what is happening exactly with us and become com uh, complacent. The Torah can serve us as a guide uh, for its human experience and humanity, its ongoing struggle between the, uh, the good and the evil continues until the Messiah will arrive. Particularly before the, the arrival of the Messiah, there will be a great challenges that will help define the difference between the good and the evil. Individuals must decide which side to join. So the good, which alludes, uh, excludes the evil and impurity, or the side of the adversary, which seeks to promote this chaos that we live in. So it is our individual choice, decision, understand, and, and there the two kosher, diet, uh, kosher loaves can help people to get closer to the guidance of the Creator. The only thing that we can do is to strengthen ourselves and our connection with the Divine is to deepen our relationship and understand this true significance of our soul. Don't let the energies of our soul be obscured. Try to connect with the true purpose of our soul, defining our place in the world. So that was for today. And thank you for watching and see you next week. Thank you.